Hello my friends, tonight I am talking about defining and non-defining relative clauses, chapter 3. Now I know what you're thinking. What is a defining and non-defining relative clause? Now, for this, I have the definition. Definition of a relative clause. It's an adjective clause introduced by a relative pronoun, expressed or suppressed, relative adjective or relative adverb, and having either a purely descriptive force or a limiting one. Are you thinking this? Okay, I'll explain it again. All right. Now, a relative clause. The main function of a relative clause is to provide more information about a noun. Relative clauses provide more information about a noun. They are dependent clauses, which means they have a subject and a verb, but they can't stand alone. It is not grammatically correct for them to be alone in a sentence. Now, they begin with a relative pronoun, a who, that, which, or a relative adverb, a when, where, or why. And I'll explain more. I live in the interior of Brazil, which is very hot. Now, which is very hot provides more info about the interior of Brazil. This is the relative clause here. Which is very hot, has a subject and a verb, but it can't stand alone. Which is the subject, it's a relative pronoun. Which is, is the verb, but it can't stand alone. Which is very hot, this is not a sentence. It's not a grammatically correct sentence. And they, it starts with a relative pronoun, like I said, which. Okay, now, defining relative clauses. That's what we are talking about today specifically. The difference between a defining relative clause and a non-defining relative clause. Okay, now, a defining relative clause. These, these give essential information about a noun. For example, I eat the types of meat that have less fat. Let's say we remove this part that have less fat. I eat the types of meat. It doesn't make any sense now. It loses its meaning. It loses its context. I eat the types of meat. Doesn't make sense. That have less fat defined the meat that we eat. I eat the types of meat that have less fat. Another example. My friend has the shoes that have lights at the bottom. This is the relative clause. Now, if we remove this, that have lights at the bottom, my friend has the shoes. Now, uh, it has no context. What shoes? What shoes are you talking about? We're talking about the shoes that have lights at the bottom. This defines the shoes. Here. I'm the kind of person who likes to stay inside on the weekends. Now, let's remove this. Who likes to stay inside on the weekends? I'm the kind of person. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have any context. I'm the kind of person. Well, what kind of person who likes to stay inside on the weekends? These are defining relative clauses. They define a noun. And... For these, the most important thing is that there are no commas. We don't use commas. Okay, non-defining relative clauses. These give extra information about a noun. Just extra information. For example, I like big cities where there are many things to do. Here, I can put a period here. And it makes sense. It has context. A person, the person likes big cities. It doesn't need this. This gives extra information. It doesn't need this part. Okay. Maria doesn't drink Coke, which has too much sugar for her. Here, we could put a period here. We could end this. And it makes sense. It has context. It has meaning. Maria doesn't drink Coke. This which has too much sugar for her, is extra information. 
Okay. And the most important thing is, with non-defining relative clauses, we use commas. Here we put a comma. Here we put a comma. Non-defining clauses can't start with that. Here, in these non-defining clauses, we can't start with that. And always use a comma to separate non-defining relative clauses from the rest of the sentence. Like I told you here, you need to use a comma. Sometimes non-defining relative clauses come in the middle of the sentence. In these cases, you need a comma too. New Jersey, comma, which is relatively small in size, comma, has a large population. Okay, now, some important words that you will need for this chapter, a skyline. Skyline is a group of big buildings uh, that you can see from a distance. Oftentimes, people think that these views are beautiful. For example, this is the skyline of Chicago. This is the skyline of Los Angeles. This is the skyline of Shanghai. They are the view of the various big buildings that exist in a city. Okay, skyscraper. A skyscraper is a, is a very tall building. This is the tallest skyscraper in the world. It's in Dubai. This is the tallest skyscraper in the United States. It's called the Freedom Tower. It's in New York City. And this is the tallest skyscraper, the tallest building in Brazil. It's called the Millennium Palace, and it's in Cambriu. Okay, skyscrapers are really big buildings, really tall buildings. Most big cities have skyscrapers. For example, Sao Paulo has skyscrapers. Rio de Janeiro has skyscrapers. Uh, even uh, Presidente Parente has skyscrapers. They're very tall buildings. Okay, so long. So long is an expression. Just another way to say goodbye. So long, my friend. Bye-bye, my friend. Rocky. Rocky is an adjective to describe ground that has a lot of rocks. Okay, so for example, here, this is rocky here. This is rocky grounds. This is rocky here. This is rocky here. Um, in the United States, we have a group of mountains that extend from uh, Canada all the way to Mexico through the United States called the Rocky Mountains. And they're, they are called the Rocky Mountains because uh, the, the land, the ground, has a lot of rocks in these mountains. Run out. Run out is when you finish the supply of something. For example, you can run out of gas. You can run out of food. In the past tense, it's ran, ran out. In the present continuous, it's running out. Um, for example, this person here is running out of gas. This person ran out of gas already. Now here, this is the gas light. What does this represent? What what is this word here in English? And what is this word here? Does anybody know? I think Brazilian cars have the same gas lights. This is empty. E is for empty. And F, anybody guess? It's for full. Every time you look at this now, I want you to think that empty and full. Okay, now bloom. Bloom is when a flower comes out of a plant. Uh, I believe in Portuguese the word for this is florescer. Bloomed is the past, and blooming is the present continuous. For example, this is a photo of a picture blooming in the process of blooming. Flat. Flat is a surface without any alterations in the elevation. For example, this is a flat surface. It's flat land. This is a flat surface here. Some people think the earth is flat. A flat earth would look like this. Landmarks. Landmarks are famous locations in a city. For example, this is a landmark, uh, the Eiffel Tower. This is a landmark, Big Ben. And this is a landmark, a famous landmark in Santo Anastasio. You all know it. Okay, plenty. Plenty is an adjective that means a large quantity. I think I talked about this last week. But I, I don't think I mentioned the common expression, there's plenty of fish in the sea, which is when somebody is feeling lonely because their relationship didn't work, uh, often people say there's plenty of fish in the sea, which means there's plenty of other people in the world to have a relationship with. Uh, plenty it means a large quantity. Okay, a dozen. A dozen. A dozen means twelve of something. Antiques. Antiques are 